Okay, before we get this video underway, I wanted to give the biggest shout out in the world to Firework Days 77 on the PlayStation 5, who created the roster we're using in this video. I'm going to be doing a lot of gameplays and recording from this season mode, which uses these players right here. They're all time teams. And what I love about these all time teams with all the created players that this user made was that none of the teams have any overlap which makes things a lot more fun. It's great because normally in all-time rosters, you know, even the NHL, EA Sports all-time rosters, you have Mark Messier on the Rangers and you have him on the Oilers. You have three Wayne Gretzkys because he played all over the place. Okay, not all over the place, but you get what I mean. There are Paul Coffey's every other team. There's two Solanis because there's one in Anaheim and there's one in Nashville. There are duplicates in regular NHL alumni roster all-time teams. But what this user did, Firework Day 77, was they isolated all of the best players and they said, okay, this player, you are mostly known for being a Red Wing, so we're going to play you on the Red Wings. Igor Larionov, unfortunately, you're not on the Canucks all-time team, you're going to be on the Red Wings team. And for guys that are not there, he creates them. For guys that are modern day, like Elias Pettersson, he puts them in. So I'm going to be going out there and doing a lot of stuff with this season mode, and I'm so, so, so excited. I know a lot of people don't care about the gameplay, but like, come on, this is the primary vehicle for my entire YouTube channel. So I'm so, so, so excited to share this with you. But either way, we're talking today about Evander Kane. At the time of me recording this audio, I don't know if Evander Kane actually cleared waivers, nor do we know if the entire grievance filing with the agent and the NHLPA has come to fruition yet. I don't care about that. I'm recording this audio the night before, Saturday, January 8th, and we're talking about Evander Kane because of an article that was published on The Athletic. Why the Sharks are ready to end their tumultuous relationship with Kane, published by Corey and Kevin. This article will be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and read this. But when it comes to Evander Kane and the context of who this player is, what his story is, and what his relationship is with the Sharks, go ahead and watch yesterday's video talking about the contract termination. It goes over everything that you need to know, and then some. But when it comes to Evander Kane and how he might be moving forward, where the rest of his NHL future is going to lie, we did have Elliot Friedman on yesterday's edition of 32 Thoughts on TV go out there and say that should Evander Kane actually become a free agent, should he clear and should he get his contract terminated, there will be teams that would go out there and sign this guy to a contract and add him onto their team. It just depends on all the regular contract stuff that you always hear about. Term, length, money, all that stuff. It's just pretty standard, right? Just with a little bit of a different foundation here with Evander Kane. However, this conversation that we're getting from the Athletic article is not about free agency. It's not about Kane going out there and signing a new contract or whatever. It's about Kane's preferences himself. Now, all we need to get from this one Athletic article was posted onto the Canuck subreddit, and it is the title of this post published by Delzor1. He links the article, he posts the post, and this is what the post says. Evander Kane, whom the Sharks tried to move over the summer after it became known to management that most of his now former teammates did not want him back, currently has a three-team trade list, believed to be Tampa Bay, Florida, and Vancouver. Now this, this is where things get very, very interesting, and it kind of gets a lot of Canucks fans super antsy, like it always has been every time we discuss the possibility of an Evander Kane transaction to the Canucks. I say transaction and not trade because just any kind of move with Vancouver and Evander Kane, it begs for a conversation nearly 100% of the time. Of course, Evander Kane being a Vancouver guy makes the connection very easy to see here, but there are indeed some other things I wanted to talk about when it comes to Evander Kane, as well as these three teams that he apparently has on his trade list. We're going to get into all of that, though, and more after a word from the sponsor of today's video. I get it. It's a new year, new you. How about going with resolutions you can actually keep this year? Well, Manscaped is here to help out, and it all starts with their below-the-waist grooming and hygiene products. Join 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get in on the action. Use code LEGOROX for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com, as this year, the Performance Package 4.0 will take you to the next level. Inside the Performance Package 4.0, you'll find the signature Lawnmower 4.0, the best electric trimmer on the market with advanced skin-safe technology. 
Your routine, though, is not complete without the Crop Preserver and the Crop Reviver, not to mention the ear and nose hair trimmer, travel bag, and anti-chafing boxer briefs, all combined with the brand new Ultra Premium Body Wash. It's cologne infused with aloe vera and sea salt to keep your skin feeling clean, nice, and moisturized. Be sure to travel to manscaped.com and use code LEGOROX for 20% off and free shipping. That's code LEGOROX for 20% off and free shipping. Cheers to 2022, and cheers to Manscaped. So when it comes to Evander Kane and his trade list, again, I'm recording this audio the night of January 8th, so I don't really know if Evander Kane is going to get contract terminated or if there's going to be an appeal or a grievance filed by the NHLPA or the agent or whatever. So at the time of this audio, we don't really know what's going to go on. But we don't really need the outcome of that situation to discuss this conversation here. Vancouver, Tampa Bay, Florida. Three teams that Evander Kane under the modified no trade clause that he had in his contract, which said that he would have a three-team tradable list, would apparently have been willing to go to. Now, let's start off with the other two first, because those ones are different conversations that we haven't been beating down the bush the entire time. Let's talk about the Tampa Bay Lightning and Evander Kane. You know, I don't want to make it seem like Tampa Bay does not care about culture, they don't care about the locker room, they don't place a high presence on, you know, the personalities in the room and all that, but with Tampa Bay and them being so gosh darn good, so gosh darn accomplished, to me, when I think about the Lightning, I just think like, okay, if you have a player like Evander Kane going over there, all of a sudden, it's not about all the crap that this guy has been dealing with the past year and a half anymore. He served the suspension for breaking protocols, there was the entire investigation done with the gambling, all the stuff in his personal life, which was unfortunately in the spotlight all this entire time. I personally feel like going over to the Stanley Cup reigning double champions gives Evander Kane an opportunity to kind of just focus on other things. Because now, okay, he's got a legit chance of winning a cup. Now he's on the best team in the world, on a team that had just lost out on a whole bunch of really good players in the offseason, and that is kind of testing the waters into seeing if they can actually make another run. Evander Kane, of course, in the entire trade saga scenario that he had, about a week ago, there was word going around that the San Jose Sharks would have been willing to retain 50% of Evander Kane's salary, even get another team involved so that the team that's acquiring Kane at the end of the day could get him for even less money. There was a whole bunch of stuff that just highlighted how desperate the Sharks were to trade this player. And so, if Tampa Bay is one of the teams that Kane would have been like, hey, trade me there. Like, if you retain half of my salary, and another team retains another half of the half, so a quarter, 75% of my salary is going to be retained. If a team is going to go out there and only take me on for 25% of my $7 million AAV contract, Tampa Bay should be that team, right? And the same could be said for Florida. Now, they haven't had the level of success that the Tampa Bay Lightning have had in the past two years, but Florida is on the up and up. Florida has been one of these stronger teams the past few years, and with the re-emergence of Sergei Bobrovsky, this is kind of the best time to be a Panthers fan. From a hockey standpoint, from a cup contending standpoint, should Evander Kane go to any of these teams, he would be going to probably the most talented team he would be a part of in his career? Like, no disrespect to Thornton and Marlowe and Pavelski and all these really good players that Evander Kane has played with, but, like, the current-day Panthers, the current-day Lightning, stick Evander Kane on any one of the lines on any of these teams, and you have a scoring line. You have line mates that could probably go out there and help Evander Kane get 15 goals at the minimum on this season, and it wouldn't even really be difficult, because, as we noted yesterday, like, Evander Kane's a talented player. He's really good at scoring goals. It's just everything else that is clouding around his game and his personality. It's been really tearing him down, and all this stuff with the fake vaccination cards and him disobeying the team and all that, obviously, it's still under investigation, which is why we're even in this predicament of him potentially having his contract terminated. It's all of a sudden more about the hockey, I think, if he gets sent over to one of those two teams. Now, for Vancouver, it's a difficult one to go out there and think about from a Canucks fan point of view, because the Vancouver Canucks have placed such a high level of importance on personality and leadership and being a good person and all that stuff, even before Jim Benning came and left. Like, the Vancouver Canucks going out there and being this organization that prides itself on the character of its players, that's not a Jim Benning thing. This kind of trend was around long before Benning took the helm in 2014. 
This was around with the Sedins, and Trevor Linden, and Naslin was there too. Bo and these guys kind of carry it forward today, but Evander Kane and Vancouver just seems like the most non-Vancouver thing they would do. Now, for Evander to go out there and have Vancouver on his trade list, by the way, that just gets so difficult to say. Evander, Vancouver, Evander, Vancouver, Vancouver, Evander, my gosh. It doesn't really surprise anybody to see that he would want to go to the Canucks because he's from here. He practices, I believe, at Richmond Ice Center near the Watermania, the movie theater, and the Go Bananas. So, I mean, if he's always here, you know, some of my friends have spotted this guy at the bowling alley and elsewhere in front of the malls. Like, Evander Kane is a local guy. So, just going out here and saying, yeah, I'd like to go home, like, that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. It's just, as we had highlighted in a few commentaries in the past, Vancouver does not seem like the organization that would even try to lift a finger towards the idea of getting into Vander Kane. Not in a trade-like scenario like Kane would have wanted to in the past few months, and not in free agency either. Now, if I am wrong, and the Vancouver Canucks go out there and sign Evander Kane to a cheap contract because they need the bodies and they need the scoring touch, then hey, I'll admit I'm wrong. I'll go out there, make a video correcting everything and saying, yeah, wow, look at me, I'm so dumb. But like, just from my attitude and the way that I'm perceiving the situation right now, Evander Kane in Vancouver does not really seem like the fit that I think Evander would have wanted it to be. Could the Canucks use somebody of the talent caliber that Evander has? Absolutely. We could use some more scores. We can use some more guys that can go out there and pot some goals here and there. Like, I get it. Petey, Miller, Brock, Bo, these guys are good. But like, if you have an Evander Kane on this team also sharing that wing spot, all of a sudden you don't need to force Pearson to be a goal scorer. He's been trying. He's been missing the net a lot. He's been doing some really good two-way plays. But... That scoring touch that he's been lacking will be fully replaced with another winger in this lineup. Maybe take out a Highmore or something and put Evander Kane in. Obviously, I'm just kind of spitting off the dome here. I don't really think it's something the Canucks would even think about, but you can tell me in the comments what your thoughts are on the situation. Canucks fans, Lightning fans, Panthers fans, talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about Evander Kane and these three teams and how he would have wanted to go to these teams should a trade have commenced. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Bye.